Now that we're on to the bivariate data section, we're looking at the ways of representing and thus comparing two types of data, two sets of data, two variables to one another. And the way that we've looked at so far is back-to-back -back stem plots and parallel box plots. And those were used when we were comparing a categorical data with a numerical data set. And I've just drawn a table to represent this. It looks a bit odd while it's blank, but just bear with me while I fill it in. So when we had categorical data, so something categorical and something numerical as our two variables that we were comparing, when we had two categories, so for example, uh, male, female, or, you know, blue, red, or agree, disagree, When you had two categories as your categorical variables, then the ways of representing that was a back-to-back -back stem plot, or as a parallel box plot. When you had more categories, so, you know, going on this blue-red example, you had blue, red, green, orange, purple, yellow, what have you then you would represent that also as a parallel box plot. You would just have a lot, a lot more boxes on the plot. Now we're going to look at how you represent when you have two categorical variables. So for example, male, female, and also your voting preference, labor, liberal, greens, etc. What about you know blue, red, and whether you agree or disagree with a particular statement, something like that. So when you have two categorical variables, you represent them either as a two-way frequency table or you can also put them into a percentage segmented bar chart. And finally, when you have two numerical variables, then that's when you would be drawing a scatter plot and we'll get onto that in a later tute. We've already covered back-to-back -back stem plots and parallel box plots in the last couple of tutes, so now we're going to go over two-way frequency tables and percentage segmented bar charts. So two-way frequency tables look a bit like this. In this one we've got two categorical variables. We've got male, female is one variable and we've got agree or disagree is another variable. And we've presented them in a table like this so that we can compare the two and see did more females agree or disagree than males, things like that. You set it up with each of the categorical variables that you have forming the columns and the rows. So for this one we've got male versus female as the categorical variable forming the columns and we've got agree or disagree forming the rows. And then they just correspond to each other. For example, this cell here means that this many males answered agree because that's where they converge. This cell over here means this is how many females agree because that's where they converge. Down to here would mean males who disagree and down to here would mean females who disagree. And then you have your totals at the end of each of the lines and columns. So this one here is the total of this plus this will give us this total. This total here adds up this row. So we've got 26 plus 15. This one here and this one here gives us this total. And then you total going down as well. So here we have 12 plus 26 going down this way gives us this total. And 31 plus 15 going down this way gives us this total. And this total in the corner, 84, should be these two added together, which should also be, if you've done it correctly, these two added together. So once you've got your data presented like this, you can make some comments about what the data is telling you. So for example here we've got males agreeing is 12 and females agreeing is 31. So a lot more females than males agree with whatever we happen to be talking about. Similarly down here we've got 26 males disagree and only 15 of the females disagree so we could say a lot more males than females disagree. But something to watch out for if you have a look down here there were 38 men in this survey and there were 46 women taking part in the survey. So there's a lot more women 
than men. So their numbers are actually going to be greater. They're going to sort of have more sway when you're just looking at the numbers because there were more of them answering in the first place. So for example, 12 versus 31. Yes, a lot more women answered, but there were a lot more women to answer the question in the first place. So one of the things we do to combat that is to turn them into percentages and we make it a percentage frequency table. So here's that table again, but I've taken away that last column of total so as not to confuse you because what we're going to do the percentage of, percentages of is going down this way. And the reason for that is on a two-way frequency table, you put the independent variable independent in the columns going down and you put the dependent going along here in these rows. In this case, we're effectively find, trying to find does whether they agree or disagree depend on their gender. So for example, do more males or females disagree on something? We're not trying to do it the other way around. Does whether they're male or female depend on their their preference? Like that wouldn't make sense. Does Does their gender depend on their preference? But the other way around works. Does their preference depend on their gender? And because of that, we don't need to know the percentages going across that way because that would be us trying to predict whether their uh, gender depends on this. So we go down the page with our, down the columns with our percentages. So what I'm trying to find is 12 as a percentage of 38 and 26 as a percentage of 38 and then 31 as a percentage of 46 and 15 as a percentage of 46. So we do 12 divided by 38 times 100 to get that percentage and we do 26 divided by 38 times 100 to get this one down here and we'll have 31 divided by 46 times 100 and 15 divided by 46 times 100. And now that I've got those percentages filled in, we can notice something quite remarkable. 68 to 32% and 67 to 33%. So even though that wasn't immediately obvious with just the numbers, the weighting of whether males or females agree or disagree is directly proportionate. It's directly opposite. So while a third of males disagree with the statement, two thirds of females agree with it. And while two thirds of males disagree, a third of females agree. So that's quite an interesting statistic and now we can compare them quite easily and talk about that uh, particular observation. This is how you might see this tested on an exam. This is a question that appeared in 2004 on the exam 2 which was the extended response and the question said the BMI for each person in a sample of 17 males and 21 females is recorded in table 2 below and then there was this table which shows you these figures the BMI for male and female and then the question said this, a BMI greater than 25 is sometimes taken as an indication that a person is overweight. Use this criterion and the data in table 2 to complete table 3, the two-way frequency table below. And then this was below. So funnily enough, we started out with some numerical data here, these BMIs. We're actually turning it into categorical by saying, putting it into these categories overweight and not overweight. But anyway, so in this question, what they wanted us to do was find a BMI greater than 25 and put count all of those up and put them in this column, the overweight column, and anything below 25 would be in the not, weight, not overweight column for both males and females. So simply what you need to do is just count up how many occurrences there are over 25. So for males, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they're in order, so that's it. And for females, there are one, two, three, that's it, there are three. So for overweight, for males, we've got six, and for females, we've got three. You could count the remaining ones, but because we've been given the totals here, we'll just say 17 minus six is 11, there must be left over, and 21 minus three is 18, there must be left over. And this question was worth two marks, so you got a mark for each correct column that you'd done. Interestingly, some people put percentages in here as their answers and the scorers that year gave one of the possible two marks if you'd done that. But the, the way this question is presented and if you see it on an exam, just use the logic about how these tables work. Just use the rules that you know about how these tables work and fill in whatever it is they're asking you to do. 
they might ask you to put in a total column or they might give you a table like this and ask you to figure out some of the percentages there could be three things filled in and a couple of blank spots something like that once you know how they relate they're pretty straightforward to manipulate these tables